Here's one cylinder head that's done. Let me give you a little look at these real quick. My exhaust port, once you start the sanding roll process, you're gonna see all the things that you have to fix that you didn't see when you were first doing your burr work. And, and it, it's, not, it's not uncommon in the middle of doing your sanding roll work where you have to pull the stupid double cut burr back out smooth out a section hit something that you missed or smooth out a little divot that you put in there but trust me once you start running the final stage which would be for me the scotch bright buff balls or whatever you want to call them they will reveal every imperfection in the surface of the aluminum this is plenty this is plenty smooth i'm not going to put any more effort into it because that you know I mean, there's a few little areas if I wanted to be super picky, kind of up there, kind of on the back wall, a little bit on the turn, you know what I mean? It could be closer to a mere flatness or whatever you want to call it, but basically I've got my bowl percentage, my bowl blend, my raised roof, everything is smooth. Um, the only reason I go even this far on port texture is just to purely to hold down uh, carbon buildup. That's it. You know what I mean? There's no real other benefit that you're going to get out of making that thing, you know, shiny enough to brush your teeth in. Just get a little look of the entrances to the ports. Um, I did not make them a lot bigger. I basically stayed within the stock opening in an attempt to maintain as much port velocity as I can. In a naturally aspirated engine, you have to be very mindful of what kind of port and uh, head you put on each uh, combination so you can get things to run the way you hoped it would. So hold on just a second, let me flip the head over so we can get a closer look. Okay guys, I'm having a little trouble with the lighting, but here is the intake port try to rotate it so you guys can kind of see more of what's going on as far as trying to straighten now you have two wall options your outer wall you want to make as flat as you can possibly get it from your opening to your intake to your bowl you want it flat now naturally your inside wall which is going to be on this side you got your rounded, it's more rounded, but you still want to massage it to be as flat as you can possibly get it. You can see we're right here at the bottom of this cathedral opening. I've just slightly kind of opened that up a little bit and then took out a little bit of this uh, ceiling just to kind of make that transition a little smoother. I have in the past even took out more meat between this cathedral point and the roof trying to stay in that 205 207 cc runner size I'll find out here in just a few minutes because I'm going to cc these runners to see where we ended up but let's take a look at the bowls on the intake and exhaust real quick okay guys I can't really relay to you how hard it is to get the lighting exactly right to do these shots because you don't want it to be over uh, exposed but you want it to have enough light that allows you to be able to see the work but there is my exhaust bowl and blend with guide work final texture then you'll notice the intake port there's my bowl cut and blend my guide work and for the first time on a set of LS Cathedral ports I am leaving the ramp in which is really hard for me to do but I'm trying to do a, a specific application head and there's no, really no benefit for the application to take out that ramp you know in my theory because right now we're operating on porting theory 
Having the higher velocity is going to make, make it a better all-around head for the 4.8 as far as streetability, part throttle, cruise, idle. I mean, there's a lot of different things that I've factored into my size. You know, I am not worried in the least about the f port flow numbers because this head, even with the 189 valve, is going to meet or exceed a factory LS6 243 head so I am not worried about flow numbers at all impeding me for my uh, horsepower or performance goals right now the whole thing is engineering a combination that all works together that's the main goal if I can get 375 to 400 horsepower naturally aspirated out of it or if I could get lucky and get 300 plus to the tires NA, you know, I'll be more than where I want to be once I put the boost to it. So, like I've said in all my previous videos, when I've mentioned boost, you can take a naturally aspirated cylinder head that, you know, let's say it flows, I don't know, 250 CFM on the intake side. You put boost to it. That thing, that all skyrockets and that head flow doesn't become a determinant until you're up into some astronomical amount of horsepower because you see people all, all the time making darn near 11, 1200 horsepower to the tire through what they're claiming to be unported 243 cylinder head. That is my, one of my cylinder heads is complete ready to go to the machine shop to get surfaced. I have not CC'd these ports, so I'm gonna get started on that process here in just a minute. I just wanna throw, throw together a video. Unfortunately, a good portion of what I work I did, I wasn't actually recording it because I was not smart enough to push the button right, so that's where I'm at. I apologize for leaving out all that grunt work but it's basically just using your double cut burrs in various sizes and working the port slowly and methodically to get everything smoothed out and get the shape, you, shape you're shape you looking for. And the, the, you know, the shapes are right here in front of you guys. You don't have to go in there and try to create your own everything. Just recreate what you see and you'll be good to go. So thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.